Washed by the warm waters of the South China Sea, a mysterious world of plants and animals lives by the pulse of the tides. A saltwater wilderness, yet unspoiled by the hand of man. It is a place of peace, of solitude, a realm of tranquil beauty and harmony. Where the daily survival of bizarre creatures is ruled by the advance and retreat of the water. Join us now as we explore a world caught between land and sea and discover the strange creatures of the mangrove. The vast tropical island of Borneo is blanketed by one of the richest carpets of vegetation in the world. Part of the narrow belt of rainforests that ring the planet and cover three million square miles of the Earth's tropics. Situated between the Asian mainland and Australia, Borneo, the world's third largest island, lies astride the equator. Dense jungle stretches unbroken for thousands of square miles. Twice a year, heavy monsoon rains buffet the island of Borneo. Torrential downpours drench the forest, washing fertile soil and organic matter from the mountainsides into swollen rivers. As the raging waters near the coast, they slow and deposit a rich cargo of silt, an anchor where new forests take root, mangrove forests. As they invade the sea, an army of trees transforms the coastline. Cradled in a bay on the northern coast is the tiny island of Siaru, 
where one of the oldest mangrove forests survives. A patchwork of greys and greens, sunlight and shadow. This in-between world is neither land nor sea. Beneath these stilted parasols, amid the tangle of roots, live some of the most unusual creatures in the world, each adapted to survive here. Native only to Borneo, the elusive proboscis monkey spends most of its life high in the branches of the mangrove. Although much of each day is spent in the trees, the proboscis has had to adjust to a life both in and out of water. Their habitat is inundated daily by the tides. Skillful swimmers and divers, they can cover short distances underwater to avoid danger. Like many of the animals here, their ancestors once migrated across a land bridge from Asia only to be stranded at the close of the last ice age when great glaciers melted, raising the surrounding oceans. Twice each day, the pull of the moon's gravity forces seawater to flood Siaru's maze of channels. Here, plants actually thrive in the inhospitable conditions imposed by the sea. Animals in the mangrove must follow the lunar rhythms or perish. As the waters recede, fiddler crabs, named for the prominent claw of the males, emerge from their burrows. Part of a large resident population, they lose no time feeding on the scum of nutrients left by the retreating tide. As they feed, they sort out edible matter and quickly discard the rest as pellets, which contain nitrogen and carbon. These are a rich food source for the microorganisms that live in the mud.
The abundant crab population is critical to the mangrove, for they recycle both minerals and organic matter. A most unusual adaptation to this ever-changing environment has been made by a fish that spends more time on land than in water. Recalling a moment more than 300 million years ago in the history of evolution, when aquatic creatures first crawled ashore, this mudskipper uses fins and tail to propel itself across the mudflat. Mosquitoes are a constant irritation. To breathe on land, mudskippers have developed large specialized gill chambers, a kind of aqualung, in which they carry a mixture of water and air. Males engage in spectacular ritualized battles to defend their territory. Oxygen is not only necessary for animals. Strange roots push up through the mud, often far from their parent trees. Called pneumatophores, they absorb oxygen through tiny pores and transfer it to the main roots, which lie beneath the surface. Without air-breathing roots, the mangrove trees would suffocate in the dense mud. Salt is a permanent problem. The sonoratia tree actually excretes it through special glands in its leaves. Seedlings of the rhizophora develop while still on the tree. Then drop like spears into the mud below. They rapidly take hold and soon sprout new leaves Crop roots radiate outward and down into the mud, trapping sediment, gaining a foothold. Slowly, steadily, the mangrove forest advances. Overhead, large fruit bats called flying foxes roost until nightfall. Using their great wings as ventilators, they fan themselves against the intense daytime heat. A hungry cat snake glides silently across the mud flat. A common predator in the mangrove, it hunts for bats, turtle eggs, or young chicks. The green heron, a favorite prey. Chicks are old enough to leave the nest. A sharp peck from the adult 
fends off the snake. All attempts are successful. From the water, a dragon-like predator comes ashore to hunt. The monitor lizard, relative of extinct reptiles that thrived in the age of dinosaurs, takes advantage of this period of low tide. Its diet is varied. Vegetable matter, crabs, mammals, and an occasional mudskipper. Eyes atop long stalks can spy voracious enemies. Most frogs live in fresh water. Because the crab-eating frog has a high tolerance of salt water, it can feed on the bountiful food supply of the tidal zone. The blue fiddler's claw waving signals ownership of a patch of mud. Only the males engage in territorial combat. other. The victor now turns his attention to courting a nearby female. Bending submissively, the female indicates her interest. In a prelude to mating, the male plucks at the female shell, or carapace, to stimulate her. He turns her toward him and they join face to face. During mating, the male continues to stimulate the female with stroking gestures. Soon the female will lay her eggs. They will hatch at the highest tide. 
The ritual is vital to the mangrove, for its marine life is nourished and sustained by the millions of crabs born each month. The battles of the crabs are of interest to others. Using strong fins and tail, the carnivorous mudskipper deftly pursues its prey. Exposed mud flats attract even monkeys from their treetop homes. Searching through the mud, the crab-eating macaques feed on fish, frogs, crabs, and other shellfish. More often a night hunter, the short-clawed otter ventures at midday to explore small pools left by the retreating tide. A stranded fish is an easy catch. Agile swimmers, otters are well suited to a life in this intertidal habitat. Low tide reveals the sturdy entanglement of prop roots that support this old forest, living buttresses against the shifting mud. Although the trees have overcome the obstacles of salt water and mud, they face an onslaught of leaf-eating creatures that invade their branches. Like the proboscis, the silvered leaf monkey spends most of the day feeding on the abundant leaves in the forest. Many of the trees protect themselves with poisons or indigestible chemicals, but the proboscis monkeys avoid the problem by feeding on the leaves of the sonoratia tree. They are not poisonous, simply tough and difficult to digest. The proboscis has a double-pouched stomach where bacteria break down the cellulose in the leaves so that nutritious protein can be digested. Proboscis live in troops of about 20. Young proboscis, with their distinctive bluish faces, play under the watchful eye of the adults.
At maturity, the blue coloration will change to a ruddy red-orange, which inspired natives to call them Dutchman monkeys, a reference to the sunburned appearance of early European colonizers. Large, heavy males feed in the sturdy center of the tree. Lighter weight monkeys venture onto smaller branches. The young stretch to the very tips to reach tender, more palatable leaves inaccessible to their elders. And the branches are picked clean. At dusk, the fruit bats leave the mangrove by the thousands and fly miles inland to feed. Nightfall brings change to the mangrove. In the darkness, the flowers of the sonoratia unfold and lure nocturnal pollinators with their pungent odor. Cousin of the larger flying fox, this small bat is covered with pollen as it laps the sweet nectar. During the night, the bat will visit many trees, transporting pollen to other blossoms. Mudskippers are also active at night, and so are their predators.
dog-faced snake is unique among snakes of the mangrove. It hunts almost exclusively on the mud flats, preying on the plentiful numbers of mud skippers and crabs. A butterfly has laid a single egg on the branch of a tree. Now the caterpillar emerges. It will spend its life eating leaves until it develops into a butterfly. For leaf-eating insects, the mangrove forest is a mosaic of poisons. Except for Sonoratia, most trees have developed their own particular chemical defense. This presents a problem for insects that lack mobility. They must feed exclusively on the one tree whose poison they have overcome. Those who feed on the leaves of the sonoratia face another hazard. The weaver ants that colonize these trees. The ants do not feed on the tree itself. Instead, they capture and kill other insects that attempt to feed here. It is the presence of the ants, not poison, that protects the sonoratia. The tough shell of this beetle is ineffective armor against the tenacious ants. They force their way under its wing case and sting it to death. beetle is carried off to the nest to be dismembered for food. Leaf hoppers have attracted the ants to this tree. As they feed, the leaf hoppers secrete a sugary protein solution called honeydew eagerly consumed by the ants. With an appetite for the syrupy fluid, the ants actually milk and tend some species of leafhoppers, like cattle. When production of honeydew exceeds the ants' needs, the weavers kill and eat the surplus hoppers. After a suitable site is chosen, the ants begin construction of a nest. The workers join by the hundreds to form chains that bridge the gap between leaves. Some grip with vice-like jaws while others hold fast to their waists and pull together leaves that will form the walls of the nest. As the edges meet, seams are woven fast with silken thread produced by the ant's larvae. Gently squeezing them to produce a sticky lacing, the ants use their larvae as shuttlecocks, moving them back and forth to secure the closure. Inside, the queen lays eggs for the colony and is tended by workers who also feed her growing larvae.
But ants are not the only residents here. A lysinid caterpillar also occupies the nest and is actually feeding on the leaves that hold it together. Incredibly, the ants do not attack the caterpillar. Instead, they attend its every move and patiently repair the damage it has done. Because it has the same chemical odor as the ants, it is protected. The intrusion is also tolerated, or like the leaf hopper, the caterpillar secretes a sweet fluid. Even as a chrysalis, the lysinid caterpillar is tended by the ants. On the mud flat, other animals are at work. Tiny sasarma crabs cause severe damage to tender seedlings. Now, with the pull of the moon at its most powerful, the tide returns. It will be the highest tide of the month. Denizens of the mudflat sense a change and make ready. A fiddler crab scrapes mud together to take into her burrow as sustenance during the long hours she will be underwater. Others cut perfectly shaped plugs to seal themselves below. Herein lies safety from predators carried in by the rising tide. With vigorous fanning motions, a pistol prawn aerates the water and oxygen-poor mud of its burrow. In the lower branches of a tree, a moth caterpillar prepares for the incoming water. 
Weaving a silken chamber, it will take refuge in a bubble of air when submerged. The Lysenid butterfly emerges from its chrysalis. Several hours must pass before the wings are dry enough for it to fly. It is now most vulnerable. But the ants do not harm the butterfly. Perhaps it is still protected by a chemical odor. This weaver ant is not so fortunate. The tide draws a hidden predator into the mangrove. To catch its prey, the archer fish repeatedly fires a powerful jet of water from its mouth. Somehow correcting for underwater light refraction and distortion, this waterborne marksman is accurate up to 12 feet. survives the flood. Safe in the watertight cocoon, it grazes below the surface. The female fiddler crab has migrated to the seaward edge of the mangrove to complete a remarkable process. From her massive egg cluster, she releases up to 10,000 tiny crabs. Her reproductive cycle is linked to the lunar rhythms and high tides, so that the larvae can be carried seaward, their only chance for survival. cast into a liquid sky, the young begin to feed immediately on microorganisms. Of the millions of tiny crabs released with this tide, few will survive to maturity. Those that escape the fish of the mangrove may be devoured by offshore predators. Eventually the survivors will return as adults and repeat the cycle. With a final effort, she releases the last of her young.
These young prawns will live in the mangrove until they migrate offshore to breed. Like other marine life, they are entirely dependent on the mangrove's rich source of nutrients. Swirling among the roots of the tidal forest, this organic soup is the basis of a food chain that extends beyond these shores into the open sea. Moonlight reveals strange mounds of earth that are home to one of the most elusive mangrove creatures. The shy mud lobster bulldozes mud from the depths of its burrow, where it spends most of its life feeding on nutrients in the mud. Tunnels up to nine feet deep extend to the water table below. Their excavations have significant effect on the surrounding landscape. Mounds may be six feet high and 30 feet wide. With the first trace of dawn, the flying foxes noisily announce their return from a night of eating fruit in the rainforest. Their droppings will help to enrich the mangrove's vegetation. Productive dredging by the mud lobster creates islands that thrust above even the high water. Born on the wind, spores of ferns alight on the mounds and germinate quickly in the fertile mud. Soon the knolls are crowned with fresh greenery and the fringes of the mangrove are carpeted in a luxuriant growth of ferns. On this newly claimed territory, seedlings of other plants take hold and flourish. Siaru's forest rapidly expands. As the mangrove develops, plants like this epiphyte move in from the rainforest, and with them, animals. The tiny mouse deer, barely 12 inches high, now forages on dry, consolidated land. Living bulwark, this wall of foliage provides protection against the seasonal storms along the coast.
Rainfall brings the only fresh water to the mangrove, and the monkeys are quick to take advantage of it. This strange world has long been a shelter for multitudes of plants and animals. For thousands of years, storms have swept this coast, but it is not the immediate effects of such storms that threaten the mangrove. In many parts of the tropics, forests lie devastated. Throughout Borneo, large areas of rainforest are being destroyed. If they disappear, the mangrove will suffocate in the torrent of mud released from unprotected hills. Life in the mangrove will also vanish. In the mountains above Siaru, the rainforest still stands. Giant patriarch of the mangrove below. At its feet, in the tidal forest, the innocent perform their daily drama. A microcosm for mankind this world awaits its fate. 